welcome to my channel. I'm Mama Atheist, but you can call me Amanda. So what is the one thing that every single human being on this planet has in common? Think about it for a second. We're all going to die. We all have to face death in some way during our lifetimes with loved ones, with our own mortality. And I know it's not something that people like to talk about or like to think about. There are things that are important at the ends of our lives. And one of those things is how we decide to leave this world and how we decide to be buried or cremated or sent off on a Viking funeral. Whatever the fuck you want, it's all about personal choice. But for those of us that are trying to live a greener life in order to save our planet for future generations, what are the options for us? What's out there? What's the difference between a sustainable funeral and a standard one that most Americans know of today? Let's start with some of the things that the funeral industry kind of pushes on us and say it like it is, upsell us because the cost of an average funeral in America is somewhere between nine and $15,000 now. That includes preserving the body, preparing the body, a casket, burial plot, all of it. There's a reason that the funeral industry is a multi-billion dollar industry, but enough said about that. Preservation. Something that people don't actually know is that you are not legally required to embalm a body. You don't have to do that for a loved one. There are special circumstances, like if you transport a body across state lines after a certain amount of time, they might require the, the body to be embalmed. Every other situation, no. You don't need to embalm your loved one. You don't need to embalm yourself. And what exactly is embalming fluid? It's formaldehyde, which is highly, highly toxic. In fact, the EPA lists it on the top 10% most hazardous chemicals. It's it's not great. It's very it's cancer causing and we're just filling human beings full of it and putting it in the ground. And of course, those chemicals will eventually seep into the soil and therefore the groundwater. And it is very toxic for everyone living in that area and the entire ecosystem. And that is unnecessary, not something that we have to do. Embalming doesn't preserve a body forever. Every body is going to decompose at some point. Embalming just allows for better viewings for funerals. And the idea that your loved one is going to be preserved forever, which is just not gonna happen. Now, let's talk about coffins. Coffins, one of the biggest expenses of a funeral, thousands and thousands of dollars, are made out of wood and or metal and usually have some kind of rubber gasket or seal in order to keep fluids in the ground from seeping in and corrupting the body of some sort, even though that's kind of what you want to happen. You want the body to be able to decompose. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The rubber is used to keep water and soil from seeping into the coffin and keeping your loved one or yourself as pristine as possible for as long as possible. Let's talk about the uh, wood that's used for these caskets. Did you know that every single year in America, four million acres of forests are cut down and used just for caskets? No joke. That's a shit ton of wood and a shit ton of forests just to throw it in the ground and stick some concrete around it and never see it again. So not the most sustainable in terms of resources. This is a, a huge amount of wood to be wasted. Then on top of our caskets, we also use casket liners or coffin liners. When a body is, a casket is put into the ground, uh, in order to keep the ground from sinking in around the casket, a burial vault is encased around the casket. Usually made up of concrete or cement is a lot, again, to put into the ground and also keeps the natural organic materials within the casket itself and the body from breaking down at a normal rate. This is all very destructive on the land, on the ecosystem, on all of it. And quite frankly, it's wasteful, it's expensive, it's just unnecessary. 
is cremation a more sustainable way of putting our loved ones to rest? I mean, it is a little bit, but let's not forget that you're talking about large amounts of natural gas that are needed in order to incinerate the body and whatever it's encased in. Once that happens, you have carbon dioxide, you have carbon monoxide, you have sulfur dioxide, or you have dioxin, you have numerous carcinogens, all of these things are released into the atmosphere after a body is burned. And if your loved one happens to have fillings in their teeth, the mercury in those fillings is released as mercury vapor, and then it stays up in the atmosphere until it rains, which then rains down toxic rain all over everybody. There are a lot of downfalls to cremation. It doesn't take up as much space, yes. It still uses less resources, but let's be honest, it leaves quite a carbon footprint. If that's the way that you want to go, there is this thing called flameless cremation or alkaline hydrolysis. What is alkaline hydrolysis? It's pretty much a bath mixed with water and lye that a body is put into. It's heated up to about 365 degrees, put in this tank and pressure is added with the heat. And then within three hours, the body is reduced to soft bone fragments. It's essentially the natural process. What would happen if you were buried, but sped up really quick. And now this process uses an eighth of the amount of energy that normal creation does and also leaves a fourth of the same carbon footprint as a normal cremation. It's not the most widely available thing in the world right now. You'd really kind of have to look for it, mostly because people don't really know about it. They don't know this is an option. Funeral homes don't usually say, hey, here's this cheaper, cleaner option to uh, cremate your, your loved one, so let's go for that. Not only go for the upsell, but it's better to know that you do have options. It's not just whatever they try to sell you. If it's burial that you want and not cremation, think about doing a natural burial. Again, something that is completely your option to do. If for a natural burial, the body is cleaned and dressed, wrapped in a shroud, or placed in a biodegradable coffin, one that could be made out of willow or seagrass and placed four feet under the ground. Four feet, not six feet. The more chance for oxygenation, which will help break down the body quicker. They even have biodegradable funeral clothes for you to wear, or burial clothes for you to wear, painstakingly made with biodegradable materials that will break down at the same rate that your body does. A great and beautiful way to go, I think at least. You know, we are part of the earth. Why not get put back into the earth and become a tree or grass or flowers? It doesn't matter. We share life with everything else on this planet. Why not go back to that after we're gone? There's one more thing that's really cool about natural burial is that you can do something called a conservation burial. In conservation burials, a body is placed in an area of land that is considered protected. Once these bodies are buried on this land particularly, there can be no development for at any time in the future on this land. This is now considered hallowed grounds. So it is a way of helping keep some of the beauty, the pristine beauty that, that we like to have around us and conserve some of the land before it all gets developed. I think that's a pretty cool thing. I know that, like I said, this isn't gonna solve the climate crisis at all. I think about it, if we're able to connect a little bit more with our own mortality, if we're able to understand our death a little bit more, we're able to understand our lives a little bit more. If we can connect our deaths to the planet and see what we can give to the planet in our own deaths, then maybe we can do a little bit more in our lifetimes to save that planet we're going into. It's all about the little steps trying to do as much as we can to keep our carbon footprint as low as possible, conserve, reduce, recycle, all that good stuff. But it's also about personal choice as well. We should be able to know what we want for our loved ones or for ourselves after we die, because we are all going to die. And it is important that we connect with that and connect with who we are. I don't know. 
What was the thought? Dying sustainably, it sounds pretty awful, but it's really beautiful when you really take the time to think about it. I guess that's it for today. Uh, thank you for coming. I will see you next time. And don't forget to think critically. Bye. Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, God, sorry. Wood and... You know, <sighs> There's a word I'm looking for. Cremation, then a more sustainable way of disposing of a body? That sounded weird, right? Because, like... You didn't murder somebody. It's not good. It's not good. It's there's a lot that is, and it, uh, and then it. Sorry. This process releases an eighth of the amount. Of, nope. Uses. This is hard. Okay. Now, the last thing. If if you're not trying again. Mmm, oh, I hate this so much. Yeah, let's try that again.